fellow gamers, this is Matt with 24 Hour PC Gaming, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Logitech G110 keyboard, which is actually my personal keyboard currently. And actually, it's become one of my favorite keyboards. Um, the first thing I want to tell you about the Logitech G110 is it is a bit older. It was released, I believe, back in 2009 might have been the end of 2009, the beginning of 2010. So it's a bit of an older keyboard. It doesn't have uh, all the new snazzy features that some of these keyboards have. Um, consider you know, most notably mechanical. It is a non-mechanical keyboard. Um, they are not individually backlit keys on this particular uh, keyboard, but uh, it is kind of a little bit of an innovator as far as uh, price point and, and um, functionality. Um, for starters, on the left side of this, we have 12 G keys, which are programmable G keys. And then at the top here, what you'll see is M1, M2, and M3. And these actually switch through your macros and also switch through the different color assignments that you give the back of your keyboard. And the MR is actually a key for uh, macro recording on the fly. Um, interestingly, over here to the right, I believe they call this like the, the gamer key or something of that sort. And what that does is it actually disables uh, the Windows key and uh, certain context menus so that during gameplay you don't get interrupted by accidentally hitting this Windows key and or you know potentially getting out of your game. Uh, along uh, the top as well here is a little icon for muting your microphone and muting your headset as well. And then this little light key here is just for turning your backlights off or on, which is kind of handy because sometimes you just kind of want to play uh, without having your keys lit up. And typically, your keys, I like to have the nice lighted look at night just so I can see the keys a bit easier. Uh, the other features on this keyboard is there is a little volume scroll right here which is actually very nice one of my favorite parts about this keyboard and then there's a quick mute button here to mute your volume um, I don't use it quite as much but these are media keys so you know play pause stop and then track forward and backwards so those not used quite as much because I just kind of feel that it's easy enough to use shortcuts on the space bar and and clicking is easy enough for myself um, but otherwise this is a typical keyboard beyond those custom keys it's just uh, 104 keys I believe they have on here and you know the, the big point of the 12 programmable keys and then I have three different uh, settings on top there so that I can have up to 36 different uh, macros or presettings set up for this thing which is nice um, particularly if you're into gaming that requires um, macros and those are usually strings of uh, um, characters you know wow I use it quite a bit for you know magic uh, and sometimes I, I get pretty comfortable over on this side of the keyboard and I'll use them a little bit more common uh, okay so uh, aside from the actual keys if you look on the back side of this what we have is actually a plug-in for you know a traditional headset which would just be your your audio and your mic and then there's actually a USB plug-in back here as well I primarily use that for uh, my mouse so oftentimes you just plug your mouse in right there and it works pretty well as you notice on this keyboard if you see it's just one USB which I personally like there's a lot of keyboards out now that have two USBs on them so you're utilizing two USB slots to use your keyboard and part of that is because they have uh, the ability to power a device from here this isn't a place where I'm going to charge a device rather it's just to connect one uh, okay so aside from that the other thing that they gave me with this is a little palm rest here as you can see it's separated I uh, probably removed it the second I got it I'm not a big fan of palm rest, but it's actually a very nice quality palm rest. And it's got little clips on here so it easily clips and detaches from the keyboard, easy enough to use. 
uh, the color scheme on this thing. It's primarily black, and then I would say, you know, uh, this is kind of like a gunmetal or, or you know somewhere along those lines. I'm a bit colorblind, so that's not an exact science for me. The back side of the keyboard, uh, you know, we have these little legs, so if you want to set it up just a little bit, you've got these little legs, and I'll put it on its side so that you can see it. You know, so it's just a very slight lift that you can have. And if you see it from the key level, yeah. So, it's decent. It props it up just a little bit. You know, occasionally I, I will have that going. Sometimes I have it usually on a raised surface myself, so don't really utilize it too much. The other thing that they like to say is, uh, you can kind of see these grooves in the back here. Their idea is that these grooves, if you had, uh, you know, a, a headset that you had hooked up to the front here, that you could route the cable, you know, through here and then back to your head. I mean, personally, I, I, I think the idea is, is fine. It's just not one that most of us gamers will actually utilize. Because for the most part, we're probably going to be using a headset that's a little more all-encompassing than... Uh, just, you know, basic stereo, which is all I'd be getting off of this. Uh, aside from that, there's not a whole lot more to say about the keyboard. The one thing I will be showing you in a little bit is just some of the software that goes into this particular keyboard. And that's really where uh, the meat and potatoes of this and some of the nicer settings that you can make. So shortly I'll be doing that and then I'll actually show you the different backlight settings and some of the presets that I already have for it. Uh, the other beautiful thing about this keyboard, and currently it is just, um, it is such an immensely great keyboard for a great price. I've seen it up for $80 uh, brand new now, and then I've seen deals that have brought it down to, you know, as close as 40 bucks. And for what you're getting um, out of the keyboard, I just think it's a fantastic deal. There's obviously other sets of keyboards with more keys that you can uh, customize and function. But for me, myself, I, I kind of like to not have too many, um, only because it's just a little unnatural to move too far off of your home row of keys here where you're comfortable. And as a gamer, uh, you know, I'd assume that you're comfortable around these keys here. So just so... Uh, just so you know, this is a very basic, straightforward keyboard now. At the time when it first came out, it was considered a, you know, pretty much a budget gaming. Um, and, and right now, it is truly a steal of a keyboard for what it offers. I've had it for about two and a half to three years myself. I absolutely love it. It still works like I got it the first day. And as you can see, the keys themselves, after much, much use... Uh, have not faded at all and are in fantastic shape and this scroll button has not lost any of its uh, ability to scroll and manipulate the sound so yeah I'll be right back with you to show you some of the software alright PC gamers this is a look at the Logitech software gaming software and in particular I'm going to be reviewing the G110 bit of the software and as you can see in here, you can select any of your Logitech devices through their software. But for now, we'll look at the G110. When you first start this program up, you'll have the option to select your product. And when I select the G110, you get to see certain keys are flashing. So the G keys, we'll take a closer look at these here. G keys allow for full customization. Um, <clears throat> what's important to know about these particular keys is that Within these customizations that we make per key, we actually have three different uh, profiles that we can have set up within a profile, even. So looking at the preliminary profile here, I just have, for example, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 set up. And these are actually preloaded profiles that you get when um, it detects the games that you have. So looking through the list here, gives you a couple of the basic options you'd see, go to crouch, go to prone. If I want to assign them to a key, I just simply drag and I drop it onto the key that I want it assigned to. 
if I want to further edit that particular macro or keystroke I can go right in here that was just into the edit and go to prone is just control which is uh, default settings so these keys are not going to work uh, or the preloaded ones are not going to work if you don't go by the default settings for the game so starting off just from the very beginning uh, simple keystroke we can put it in here and then we can name multi keys if I wanted to for instance uh, say my go to prone is typically X I could record it as X if I wanted to add in more J K L so if I'm doing maybe a casting spell or something like that very useful for magicka I'd go in and I'd create a key combination in here um, the button that I have selected down here is record delays between events that actually records the delay between when you uh, press and depress that particular button um, that comes in handy for uh, casting games and, and actually a good majority of games where it's not going to record or uh, not going to record e each action very quickly so if I had a game for ma like Magicka for instance where I have a spell that I'm casting and I'm combining different elements if I have it just going FQASA it's not going to have enough time to actually record them in game so I actually delay it and then that way in game it'll uh, record appropriately now moving on from that display command name on the game panel display this is a little more related to um, my gamepad so if you were to have a Logitech gamepad you could select this and it'll actually display the command name that you're hitting repeat options here on the bottom they give you the option to set this up as a repeated command so I could say none or I could say hey while it's depressed or pressed we can keep repeating it and then there's a toggle mode as well we can also set like our delay here so if we record this without recording these here we could go ahead and put in our own delay text block uh, you know, if you have a particular string of trash talk you like to put out there, uh, hey, why are you camping so much? I could go ahead and create this, and then I could bind this to one of the G keys. Mouse function basically gives me the ability to turn one of the G keys into any of the mouse buttons, including uh, scrolling. Media is pretty self-explanatory. Play, pause, stop, previous, next track, and then volume as well. Hotkeys is interesting. Just a, a quick way to do some of the things you probably already know how to do. Show your desktop. Open up a new tab in the browser. So I can take these and assign these to uh, my G keys as well. Zoom, editing. The next item here is shortcut. So I could assign my G key to a shortcut and or a program um, that I want to start up whenever I hit that G key. Function, these are like basic shortcuts. So it's going to default to your default email, default web browser, default media player calculator, or my computer. Once again, just a nice way, quick access to any of these in particular. Audio is kind of neat. This gives you the option to mute and unmute your speakers, microphone, increase your microphone volume, increase the bass, the treble, and also turn on an advanced equalizer. Once again, we've got repeat options displayed at the bottom here. Voice avatars. This is a little more related to um, the headset. So if you had a headset, you could set up a voice avatar on your G keys and it would default to these voices that you have here. And then the last thing they have in the list is vent and they give you just easy ways to uh, put G keys uh, in for your vent application. Push to talk, mute, unmute, etc. Alright, so backing out of that here and once again, the great thing about it is that we have these three keys here. This fourth key up here is called a macro recorder. Uh, that allows me to kind of record a macro on the fly. I hit that button, enter the macro, hit it again, and then it's going to auto-save that in particular. 
Um, so flexibility is kind of the main thing. Now another interesting thing between these keys is that we can actually assign different colors to them. So when I have my M1 key pressed and I can press it in here or I can press it on the actual keyboard itself, it maps it to a backlit color of red. When I hit M2, it's a little more of a blue and M3 is kind of like this darkish greenish red type of color. So not only do I know that I've I've switched the commands that are associated with my G keys, but I've also switched the color of the keyboard, which is neat. And as you see here, as I have it enabled per profile backlight settings, just because I like that option. Moving on uh, into the actual profiles here, as you can see, I have a bunch of preloaded ones you can make your own as well you can look up profiles and I'd probably be best to go back here you can create them in here and what's interesting is when you create the profile you'll name it give it a description and then you can select the game executable so whenever this game comes up it's going to load this load this particular uh, uh, profile that you have set the other option they say uh, select using game panel display that's going back to the G13 so not important if you just have the keyboard but also another nice little thing about having multiple Logitech pro uh, pieces or accessories because they give you further editing within this program to do a couple more things with them lock the profile while the game is running and then copy from any, an existing profile which is neat so if you're moving on to, um, say you created a profile for Borderlands and you just want to update it to Borderlands 2, you could create the Borderlands 2 profile here, copying off of the original Borderlands, and then if there's any buttons that you like to add, you know, you have a good starting point. Moving away from that, we just go into the, the, uh, the settings. There's not a whole lot in here, um, except for quick macros which is what this button does for you here I can select to record delays there rather than just keystrokes once again um, and then show you know show the quick macro recording instructions on the game panel display once again just a really nice uh, feature that they have so that you can kinda use the tools at your disposal or the Logitech accessories to their best ability all they list under here is firmware versions and, and so forth. They do the same through here. Uh, headset, smart voice morphing, etc. There's a little help button here. And this little help button kind of gets you into their index. Once again, you know, Logitech's done a, quite a good job putting together a piece of software that's useful. And it's not just useful just for setting up colors and recording keystrokes and so forth it's useful because it's full featured and it gets in all of your your hardware or accessories that you may have so uh, doing things that uh, that Logitech has is for compatibility between the two is nice and easy once again the little question mark is another help section that you can get into but aside from that very happy with the software it's uh, once again full featured gives you everything that you'd want not really buggy I found that it works really well uh, so you should get it you'll enjoy it and this is Matt with PC Gamers once again signing off and game hard